Ow! <laughs> Damn it! Morning. We're just having fun. If you take stuff too serious, this channel may not be for you, buddy. This is how young puddings are born. <laughs> oh, just playing. This is how blood pressure is raised. That's what it is. Oh, that's right. This morning we're plumbers. Not because we want to be out of necessity. Next, we throw this wrench. Not because we want to out of necessity. <laughs> hey -ya. Oh, that's good. Try to kick that hen straight in half. Here at Puddin's Plumbing's, if your shitter lines ain't clogged, they will be when I get through with them. Yes, ma'am, I got that sink fixed. Is it okay if I use your shitter real quick? I ain't no plumber here, but uh, just did what I had to do so me and my family could shower. Probably important to be able to do that. Showers are important. You know what else is important? Usually being able to move your vehicle, okay? If you got a vehicle, you probably won't be able to move it. If you look at exhibit A, B, C, and D, they're all movable. But if you look right here at exhibit E, E stands for, E stands for embarrassing because the way that thing tries to roll is just downright embarrassing. The one thing I know for certain that I want is her to be able to move. Four flats, four locked up drums, and probably 4,000 plus pounds says she ain't going nowhere. Do you know how to get one wagon mobile? You go steal the wheels and tires from another wagon. That's right, my Krager Eliminators are out on that 64 wagon at the other place. We need to get them off there anyhow. So I reckon I'm gonna do a little clean up in here because it's still dirty from yesterday's work. Anyhow, we'll load up a couple things and we're gonna go see if we can get, reclaim our Krager Eliminators. Impact, check, grinder. In case them lug nuts won't be ornery. Just playing. That ain't why we're gonna, we, we are gonna take the grinder, but that's not why. I'm gonna show y'all while we're out there or start to show you, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing, guys. I know what I'm doing, but I don't know what I'm doing. I just figure since we're gonna be out there and I know I'm gonna have to patch the rust on the one fender, that if we can get a patch panel while we're out there, we do the kill, kill two birds with one stone. The classic double whammy. The good old fashioned two trip saver. If we're gonna be cutting, we're gonna take our ear muffs and our uh, finger savers. Let's go check out the old patch panel here. Uh, go to the mullet on the back of Mr. Horsepower and head down and you'll find old Rot Central. I reckon you ain't gotta have lines. I just, I'm someone who prefers to have them where I can uh, cut them. Whoop! Next, you wanna take your slice and dice. I'm gonna use the mobile one. But I'm not gonna use her for long because apparently her battery's dead. Lock and load, reattack. y'all see all the debris that just fell out of there? Now she's a little rusty, but I think we can wire wheel that and we'll soak her in some rust inhibitor. Maybe some good old classic red brown burnt-ish color primer. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But she'll dang sure look better with uh, that gone. 
Max, you want to leave old Puddin's Plumbing location where you can go to Puddin's Patch Panel location. Oh, did you hear that pop sound like a strut come through the hood? <laughs> Hell, she just a damned old work truck, you know. I had to pop in the old Puddin's factory here. We got just Puddin's everything. New locations around the world. Get her jack. Now I ain't yet showed y'all this wagon neither. And we ain't gonna start now. Uh, all we are gonna do is get the wheels and tires off of it. Y'all hear some bass in the background, a little rumping and thumping. That ain't the Torolo, okay? My framers are over there mm, getting down with it. Oh, let put this plumbing hop in. Ugh. I say my framers, they're they're framing the house. They do not, that sounded wrong, okay? I didn't mean it like that, like I own them. Y'all knew what I meant. I'm just trying to get down with the boys. Come on. Ooh, they're always jamming out. Yeah. Reclaim the old eliminators here. Yep. We're gonna slap the extra wide rallies on the front. These studs might be rusty, but they're trusty. Boy, those poor things are in piss poor shape. I got all the wagons, don't I? I even forgot about that one. Wish I never would have got rid of our Datsun wagon we used to have. We'll try to set them on some blocks at least and keep them out the dirt. A little dirt never hurt till it rusted away a wheel. Then uh, you wish you would have kept them wheels out the dirt. Whoop! That was a little more tight fit, had to work for it. Man, I love the factory color on this one. She's a 64 also, which is like a bucket list car. I, I want a nice, I want to find me a nice 64. Whoop, snake peek. Yeah, I like that little snake peek action over there. Boys are getting after it. They don't sit on their ass and not finish projects. They get after it. Did I just accidentally find our patch panel door? What is this even from? Damned old Camaro or something? Got Camaro with a 350. With RV cam. Yeah. <sighs> New little off-road in here. Oh, she's almost off the jack, too. If two threads of two lug nuts won't hold it, the rest never would have. That thing was holding on with a damn prayer and a hope. Don't worry. Just sitting here short stroking. I'm used to that though. <laughs> because these junk cars are always down in the ground, guys. They're, I always got to do short strokes. What, what were y'all thinking about? That's good. Sure, we got the wagon up off the ground. But the body of these things sits so low that we can't get the damn wheel and tire off damn wagons dang low riders stupid custom cars oh, i don't want to put up with your crap right now let's find a solution picked us up a pot county jack stand here actually fits right there pretty dang good slow and steady wins this uh death trap race oh i see it drooping some holy cow I do not remember that being that hard to put them on. Yeah, she's a drag racing small tire unit, if you didn't know. Got the damned old mags on the back. Oh, Luckily, that went on easier than uh, the other one came off. Got a car right there. I got a running board right here. Got about 12 pockets on me, and sure enough, I sat them lug nuts in these weeds somewhere. That's a perfect place to hide your lug nuts. 
I found them. Oh, perfect. We got them all. Look at that tire wrinkle like she's doing a damn papa wheelie. Load them up. <sighs> I forgot to ask earlier, guys, if anyone has any tips for keeping the inside of a vehicle clean, just comment down below because uh, I could use all the help I could get. Pulled the slice and dice of the muffs and our old patch here out before I loaded them suckers up. Boy, wasn't the dirt dauber we got going there already. As far as our patch goes, we want to get it out some good quality American steel. We could cut it out of one of these Datsuns, but that metal's always so thin. Uh, yeah, it, it'll, it blows out quicker than, you know, say after a trip to the Taco Bell. Like, it ain't good for welding. It's going to blow out. So that pretty well leaves us with slim pickings on what we could cut a patch out of. <laughs> oh, see, like right there. See where that quarter's whoopty dude? You just kind of fit her up somewhere and you're like, hey, look, that actually matches up pretty dang good. Let's lay down there ain't matching good. Maybe you come up here. I don't know. See, that don't match as good. Trunk lid's a little better, but right there is really happy. First, we're going to do a little lumberjacking. Once you get all that wild brush out your way, pull that old marker out the front pocket. I like that right there, guys. <laughs> and this car's rough, guys. I only kept her for parts. Good drivetrain, a rear end, front clip for something one day. And now she'll be good for patch panels. There we go. Got us a good patch panel. Should have brought the welder out here. We could just tack that right back in like nothing ever happened. We'll just store that there. 100 bucks. She had a stuck engine. We got her running. Dang, I put a new radiator hose on this rig. I forgot all about that. Uh, she's got a full front clip. It's got all the accessories for the front of the engine. I don't even know what transmission's in it. Don't tell me she's an overdrive. No, she ain't no overdrive. Hell, I knew that. It's a 77. That's too early for overdrive. Same front clip I use on my international truck. So that's a good width for a, you know, hot rod project, something, shop truck. Good rear end. And what's this car worth? No title. She's rough. We got it running, but it was rough. So yeah, you know, she's worth more than the hundred bucks to parts for me. And then if you're not attached, like I'm not, boom. Plenty of patch panels off this rig. And she's got a hitch. We might have to steal the hitch for our wagon. I got her wheels, got her patch panel. I'm gonna uh, rally up my stuff and head back to the house. She's gonna need a little fine tuning, but that's gonna work out good. Not that we're gonna try to weld that up out here or nothing. Uh, we ain't gonna take the welder off roading. Let's start to, I guess we'll just start here on the front, try to get the front end jacked up and start trying to work the front ones loose. <laughs> Cap ain't perfect there, but I bet old Slick Fitty will uh, polish that out for us. He'll take all of his little hammers and, uh, oh, she's even split right there. Gonna give these a little looby dooby. I may have left my impact out at the other place. I guess someone at one point had painted these uh, steelies red. So they did red steelies and Mr. Horsepower on the fenders. She was a hot rod. Well, rink dink gonna get her dead. <laughs> Old girl still got it. We'll start with giving her some love taps, I guess. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if we gotta pull that drum off there. We're trying to pull the drum off. I meant the hub with it. that 
cap a tap. Pull your cotter pin. Gotta pull the nut. Ooh, 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 ooh. Take that bearing as well. I don't know if y'all can see it, but it's a lot more than it was. Now, according to my calculations, I don't know if this is gonna work, but the camera just died as I got my puller put on here. I'll tell you what happens, she comes right off. Get her bearing back on, and of course her washer, nut. I ain't done cotter pin at this time. Y'all even looking at me, what the hell y'all doing over there? What the smell, that file messed up. Y'all missed some good stuff. Bill come riding up on his bike. The car wasn't lifted high enough to get the wheel on, so I asked him if he could jack it for me, and then I <laughs> realized what that sounded like, and then he did jack it for me, but then he just hopped on his bike and took off. He did a hit, hit it and quit it, I guess you could say. Uh, but long story short, we got this side together. Good thing is, since she's locked up, we ain't even got to worry about sitting her down on the ground. Uh-huh. Dug this one plumb out the dirt. And good thin edges like that is why we gotta find some new steelies for this rig. It's all right, these X-Frame cars, I think a 14 looks small on, so we're gonna go up to a 15. Hair bigger, looks a whole lot better, I think. Oh. This side's definitely uh, stuck on there a little better. She gonna fight us to the end. Come on, baby. Oh. Yeah, I don't think we were getting that adjuster backed off there. On to the back. Dang, that's what you'd look like riding Cali. You don't know, riding Cali's when you got like air ride or hydraulics and your front's up and your booty's down. You drive around butt dragging like you're on the boulevard. Just keep doing the same things here, guys. I'm feeling stuck and I could use a break. See what I did there? Stuck brake. That's what we're working on, stuck brakes. Yeah. That sucker's got some tension on it, I guarantee it. Oh. All right, what y'all just watched, that happened like three weeks ago, guys, right before Christmas and all that. I was trying to get a video done that week, and anyhow, it couldn't get done. I was going to tear down the suspension uh, originally in this video, and now that I've been on, uh, you know, had a little break with the family, I got to thinking about this thing, and it's not very, it's not a lot of work to pull the body off this chassis. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, here's where this thing snowballs, right? Wrong. I hope wrong anyhow. This ain't a snowball, it's simply an extra step along the way. An extra step so we can do the stuff right. Uh, let, let me tell you what I'm thinking here. If y'all were hoping we were gonna do the uh, air ride and stuff, I told you we wasn't. I was leaning towards the uh, hot rod status. So I got our steelies here. We got some old fat tires here. Oh yeah, look at these old fatty McFat fats. I don't even know if they're gonna fit on the back back. We got the 275-60-15s. Uh, we are not going white letter out. We're going black steelies, black wall. Kind of like that Photoshop I showed y'all, except that thing had like some 17s and 18s or something. Uh, 15 looks good on these. Bigger than that's too big, I think. By hell, what do I know, guys? I don't know nothing. I just fire from the hip. Now, what else do we have for this build here? Good question, because I don't remember uh, 
straight six oil pan gaskets because we're going to rebuild a straight six and put it in here. Real hot rod. Just playing. Those were left over from the 58 that we just fixed the oil pan gaskets. That video is on the second channel. We actually took it back to the owner. Sorry, I keep getting distracted here. Uh, what all do we have? Air breather, radiator, and then the majority of the other stuff is a gas tank for this. Uh, new one, which is nice. And then a two inch drop spindle disc brake conversion kit all in one. And now that I've locked in my plan, we gotta talk about the plan so you understand what I'm doing and you understand why I'm gonna say it ain't that much more to just go ahead and pull the, the body. Uh, if we did a two inch drop spindle and maybe cut a coil where we get around three inches of drop in the front, of course she ain't got a complete engine in her so that front end would be down a little more. The back, we're gonna, apparently they do not sell a one inch lowering coil for the back of these. A lot of people on the ham, the old jalopy journal, said you can cut these rear coils. We're gonna experiment with that some and see how that goes. Uh, but I full got everything to rebuild all the suspension where she gets all new bushings and tie rods and you know, all, all that gets replaced. And we're not getting too crazy with it, but we're doing the disc brake kit on the front and doing a power uh, booster, whatever setup. The front two brake lines are gonna be replaced. Uh, so this body's really easy, really easy. They can be easy enough to disassemble. I had a 64 uh, four door. I drove it in the shop. About five hours later, I pulled the body off myself. Of course, I had two bumper jacks that helped on that whole deal. I think in one day, we can hopefully have this ready for disassembly. And if we take that body off, guys, uh, all it, it's not that much. We should have to disconnect our fuel tank at the back. All the wiring stays within the car. Most of the stuff you gotta disconnect usually involves the engine, which ours don't even have. So, if we do pull the body off, then we have the chassis, which is obviously easier to rebuild the suspension and do all that stuff. And what I was thinking is, we can send the chassis to my sandblasting buddy with all the suspension parts. He can do what he's good at, which is blast the stuff and paint it with some chassis black. He's more than affordable. It ain't even worth us spending the crap to try to buy it and clean it ourselves. We'll only save like $200, but it'll take us like two weeks, if that makes sense. So as he does what he's good at, we got to put floors in this thing anyhow in a couple areas. So if we had this up on stands, obviously it's easier to fix the floors the correct way. We do what we're good at. He does what he's good at. And then when we put everything together, it's got a nice chassis underneath. And that's it. That's the extent of it snowballing. Now I know that was a lot of yakety 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 uh, But that kind of gives you a game plan of where this is headed. Oh, I didn't talk about drivetrain. Uh, it's just gonna get 350. Uh, people thinking I'm gonna try to make this thing pull a wheelie. When I say a hot rod wagon, I mean a hot rod inspired wagon. I build cruisers, guys. Uh, so it's probably gonna be a 350 little camshaft. Uh, we'll probably build a, or have a 700 R4 built for it, but we're not trying to actually build a drag car or something like that. I just want something I can drive everywhere that has a hot rod influence. I am to get a run and drive and stopping. Step number one, we gotta get the body off this thing. <laughs> I have no clue how we're gonna get the body off this thing. Boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, boom, boom. Turn your sound system down when you drive by here. I know good and well there ain't a hood latch on this, so I don't know why I look every time like I need to pop something. Step number one, pull your fan shroud. Step number two, remove exhaust. Check. Step number three, install that hood latch or you actually have to pop it next time. Just flying, get out of here. You know what we need? We need a can of Luby Dooby, the old ass blaster. <laughs> I don't know why I called it the ass blaster. It uh, breaks loose faster. We're gonna lube that and disconnect it, even though we could simply cut it because we're not gonna reuse that. We're gonna Luby Dooby this up because I think that's where it disconnects. Now up front, brake line, whoop, we might cut it. Disconnect that. Our firewall right there, we've got a bolt, and over there we've got a bolt. You come up front on the core support, bolt, over here, same thing, bolt, and we're gonna have to pull the front bumper off. Now other than that, we got our shifter to worry about. 
but all of our wiring that would usually go out to say like our generator like right there that's disconnected any of our stuff with our heater hoses and obviously air conditioning disconnected uh, we got a little bit of wiring down here off the starter we need to get she wants a little pre-soak she can have some pre-soak and i do believe that's all we got to get up here the front clips on these are strong enough guys you can leave it all together and just whoop take everything straight up shoot that brake line broke free no problem uh taking this crap apart is the super easy part what i don't know guys is how i'm gonna pick this body up uh we may have to pull the seats out of the inside possibly. that's good we're probably gonna have to pull the seats out of this thing uh yeah i didn't get that that one i dropped i just reloaded with the new one here uh pull seats to cut some weight i imagine this thing's pretty heavy and yeah we'll see there's that yeah hair too big and a hair just right 11 sixteenths is the ticket back the wrist saver with the pot county speed wrench and you've got damn near a unbeatable duo Gave her some love taps to create some uh, separation in that clamping situation. Oh, I see her moving. Now, it's been too long since I've done this, and I can't remember if you're supposed to separate it there. Or oh, I forgot uh, the rag joint down here obviously clamps to the gearbox, too. Hell, I'm feeling generous. We'll try both. Of course, we get her some luby dooby too. Spin that baby where we can get a socket or a wrench on her. What is she, a 36 point? Yeah, she is. Uh, we'll just have to use that old ratchet and wrench. Oh, that sucker's on there. Holy cow. I'm gonna try something I ain't tried before. Old Sweet Potainer's got this skeet skeet. And I guess if something's stuck, you just put some skeet skeet on it. Helps loosen seized and stubborn hardware with less mess. I'd certainly call that seized and stubborn. The release parts stay lubricated and protected from further corrosion. Hell, this whole wagon could use some skeet skeet. It simply uses shock freeze technology. Shake well before using. Spray a liberal amount on the area to be treated. Part should be ready to loosen after 30 seconds. I think that qualifies as a liberal amount. Oh, she is sizzling and bubbling. Y'all see that? Yeah, maybe not. I'll give her another round. I ain't scared. Oh, my hand's frozen. Careful, you'll get frostbite. Y'all see it sizzling that time? Do your thing, skeet, skeet, do your thing. Well, that's been at least 30 seconds, so I couldn't break this before by hand. Let's see if I can now. Oh, no, I cannot. <laughs> oh, there she goes, guys. There she goes. <laughs> Had to get me a a rag here because this got a little slippery because i'm not the best shot with my skeet skeet there but uh hey that sucker's backing right out now well, as little john would say i'll skeet skeet god dang i'll thread that sucker out by finger now there we go that's what you gotta do you gotta loosen both where this shaft can drop down further that away tap that back that away that away that away that away all that matters is she's off what we gotta do to get her shifter it looks like it just clamps into place we got here old half inch you dang skippy that clamp never stood a chance oh there we go the lord's gonna bless us with some sun and warmth this january shoot i'll take it we'll ditch the beanie and get the elmer foot on Double check all this, make sure it's all free, make sure that's free, make sure that's free. 
Probably ain't gonna hurt nothing. Oh, drop the nut, go figure. There's our main power cable. Then we got our starter solenoid by, and whatever the greeny weeny is here. Starter solenoid wire's definitely loose. Holy cow, taking that baby off by a thumb there. Shoot, we're gonna take this one off by finger too, aren't we? If you would have uh, bet me money on that, I would have lost that money. Or is the skeet skeet just that good, guys? I don't know. Uh, first time using it. You gonna try some skeet skeet or any of his cleaning products or uh, some of that sweet tainer sauce. It's all available at sweetpatina.com. Just use that old promo code on the screen. That lets them know Puddin's Fab Shop sent you. Look, we just took that off by finger. And just like that, all of our wiring was disconnected. All right, baby. Uh... Let's see if the front bumper's gonna play nice or not. Now our lower valence on our bumper here has definitely seen better days. She's got a whoop de doo and a half in her. Yeah, old driver's side ain't much better. She's got a humdinger too. So we gotta unbolt this, all this, there's brackets. I'm gonna just start pulling crap and see what happens. Nice old rusted 3 8 bolts, half inch impact. What could possibly go wrong? She'll just come right out. Y'all know that. Same with our bottom one. Rusty but trusty. Uh, where we're going next? I ain't gonna lie, guys. This bumper looks like a pain in the rear. Bumper intermingles to the valence. The valence looks like it intermingles to the grill. Uh, my 64, I don't believe was like that. I don't really remember though. Where are these things? Different sizes? Yep, different sizes. That makes sense. On the plus side, at least it came out. Now it's Mortsky's turn. <laughs> Well, that's one way to do that. This is all free over here. We had bumper brackets in there. That's why we had to take them out. And it looks like one bolt here holds this on. So if we can get this one, this whole piece should drop. There we go. Boy, that old skeet skeet is getting her done. Me and Slick will probably knock the dents out of this and run it through the planish and hammer and clean it up as much as possible. Then we'll kind of get her tweaked till she bolts back on and it won't be perfect, but it'll look better than that. But that's on down the road, I reckon. I was thinking this piece was connected to this, but I actually don't think it is in there. That's what's all connecting to our fender wheels and our grill. We got one bolt on this little thing here in the middle, but we can get it from up top there. Yeah, that bolt's trying to come off, but I can't get my backing wrench on it quite right. So, if this will come off, uh, we should be able to get to it fairly easy. hey yo, that gives us some room to get in there and work. We can straighten that up too while we have it out at some point. Next, we're going to take our locking pliers because uh, it's got a nut plate in there spinning. That's the deal. Got them on that nut plate. And now we've got that that goes with our hood latch. Store her right there. And now that bracket that did attach to the bumper and the core support should be separate. We've got our gyro side caught up here. And now we're going for our main bumper bracket bolts. That sucker didn't even try to fight me. Neither did that one. And last, we're gonna look at our little support rod here. I'm actually really impressed with how easy all this crap's coming apart. Every bit of it's just zooming right apart. professional and that was supposed to happen 
Uh, it caught me off guard, but didn't hurt. Luckily, I had the Elmer Fudd on. I'm not joking, that hat right there with that little bit of foam and plastic was in the perfect spot where that striker hit. I actually barely felt it. It did scare me a, a hair though, okay? Might have a little poo-poo in my britches. That's my warning, okay? That's the be careful, all right? Because we're getting into a dangerous situation trying to pick up this body. Uh, uh, that's my little, you know, my warning. That bolt had us right there where I took that balance off between the fender. I forgot to pull that one up out of there, just took the nut off and it was wedged on there. Oh, there we go. We got a bumper. And boy, do the front of these cars look terrible without bumpers. Second round of skeet skeet on these core support uh, bolts. She is a little torque, but we got her to break. That one right there came off pretty easy. Didn't fight me too bad. It spins good enough that you can't use the ratcheting in, but it's hard enough to spin I can't get it by finger. I think I finished telling y'all why I wanted to pull this uh, down to the chassis besides making it nice. Uh, all we should have to run is a single fuel hose or fuel line, hard line. So we might as well run a new hard line to the rear brake line to the rear and uh yeah that's my whole justification we'll just have a nice chassis with new stuff i reckon basically what i'm saying is we're doing all this just to run a new fuel hose you know just to make it easy even though we could already ran a new fuel line from the front to rear you know no big deal next we're gonna go for our firewall mounts right there uh, i do plan on moving this to that side over there when i go start picking up so it's a good thing we disconnected our steering ah steering's overrated Get down here frame side and you can see her bolt. Well, she broke loose, but her backing wrench definitely popped off. And I finally got some crap in my eye. Oh, just a little 80 grit in there, feels good. I see that pop off, huh? came off like nothing it came off like it's meant to be yep yep she's playing nice that one come off too <laughs> hell uh, with that out of there i think everything firewall forward is good to go we may have missed one thing here or there. I don't think so, though. Yeah, look who shows up now that we uh, got those ourselves, not having no one to hold a wrench. Thanks, Bill. Perfect timing. Instead of working our way down the middle, uh, we're going to go ahead and hop to the back, get what we can back here, and then we'll work our way towards the front. I think we probably need to get her on jack stands and pull off the wheels and tires. I think that's going to get it where we can see some of the body mounts. I don't remember exactly where they all are, but I don't think there's any until you get back here and then it's like one, two, three or something. Oh, yeah, she ain't picked up quite enough. Her tires are hitting the ground again. Let's see what we see. We damn sure see some missing brakes. See our lower control arm, big old coil spring, old shock. There's the banana bar. That's the bar right there you see. The upper uh, three link bar, nanner bar. Boom, right there, that's a body mount. Boom, right there, that's a body mount. Yeah, and I think the last one's at the very back. So the real question is, is that sucker gonna come out of there? Think the body mount bolts are gonna be nice or no? I'll be all right. Be all right? I know on the car specifically, one of the body mounts are bad about rusting out. I don't know if that applied to the uh, wagons. Now, from what I remember, don't quote me on this, I think I'm right. 61 to 64, two-door, four-door, all uh, use the same chassis. And then the El Camino and the wagons, 61 to 64, they use the same chassis. And all the stuff's interchangeable between them. They just have a little bit longer wheelbase or something, I think. 
I think I'm right, but I could be wrong. So there's your uh, uh, X-frame knowledge for the day. There's one. Hey, look how nice that bolt looks, guys. Nice and shiny. Shoot, that baby will polish out. That's a brand new bolt right there. Let's see how this one treats us. She'll come out too. Some good looking bolts, huh, Bill? Can't believe that crap. <laughs> well, it's unfortunate she ain't got the posi traction. Uh, boom, there we go. That's a washer and then your bushing. And there should be a sleeve and a upper bushing, yep. And you can get new bushing kits. So when we go to slap her all back together, we can put some new body mounts in there. Oh, crap. Just got these legs yesterday. <laughs> Don't mind me. Old Bambi here. <laughs> Look at that exhaust pipe. Plum gone. Just annihilated. This thing was only on the road for eight years. tailpipe had to be right in the way uh, it fell or it fell just ripped real easy though and i think this is the mount that everyone says is problematic She was the honoriest so far, but it still came apart. She wants a little sawzall action. We'll give her a little sawzall action. <laughs> Can't look like a badass with a dead battery, Bill. There we go. So I said we're gonna work from the back towards the middle, but I guess we did just work from the middle towards the back. Uh, let's have a look underneath this hind, hind end. Did find a little rot right there, not a lot. Uh, I see we got some bumper brackets right there. That right there should be the last of our uh, actual body mounts through the chassis. We'll probably have a couple wires since our uh, bumper has a light. Let's just start pulling this crap. good up there where it's rusted i think we just spun that one so that'll be interesting to figure out and here i thought we were gonna get lucky the whole way this one's pert near out uh not quite i don't quite know what we're gonna do about the body mounts yet uh we may be able to torch the head of that bolt off there uh, but first, we're going to get this bumper out the way, then worry about it. New stuff was going too good here. You know why that happened? Because Mortsky said how they always got to cut them out up there because everything gets so rusty. And I was about to gather all these bolts and send them a picture of them and say, oh, yeah, I went to rest. And, uh, yep, here we are now. That's my fault. Well, this back bumper, they weren't playing no games. We got bolts everywhere. See, it, it has a little valence, too. Got some bolts there. Looks like a little 5 sixteenths up there. A little bit of rust, anyhow. Well, I don't know how the hell I'm going to get them. She's off. Tried this side, same thing, valence come off, but all the bolts are fighting me, nut plates are spinning. Uh, we're just gonna cut off what we can cut off. This thing rolls a lot better when there's wheels on it. Bill's on fire watch.
There's one way to do it. Oh, she's loose. That one definitely got away from me and I blew out the bracket. Shit happens. light just popped out for us and hopefully that helps us get a little bit uh, more room for cutting out the body bolts whatever because that's gonna be a pain it's gonna have to go straight up in there Like when I set that old yeehaw on fire, we just we're ready for a wiener roast underneath here. That rubber's on fire. Got her good that time, Bill. I heard it. Yeah, me too. Well, I know I blasted a large uh, portion of it off there anyhow. Uh, man, we're rolling smoke out of the garage. People's gonna think we're on fire. I think we're about ready to move this thing. The only problem with moving this thing is, what we got crap here, we got crap there. Uh, boy, we just got crap everywhere. Use the old Torola and push it this way, then that away. Hey, speaking of Torola, look what came in. One, Love Tap stickers and the Dats and Truck sticker. Both of them are uh, t-shirts as well, uh, available at puddinsfabshop.com right now. Just released, uh, the Love Tap's a limited edition, so once them 500 are gone, they're gone. And I don't know about the truck yet. Anyhow, uh, look what else came in. I told you I wanted a little cover thing uh, for my outlets out at the other shop, and I drew this up. Uh, on a piece of paper and sent it to Ian from Big Big Tire Garage. I still know him as Ian from uh, Extreme 4x4 because that's the show I grew up watching that he was on. And uh, he cut that out for me, sent me out some stickers. If y'all did not know, uh, he has his own YouTube channel, Big Tire Garage. So go check that thing out too. I'm not saying we're going to end up dimple dyeing these half inch holes and then breaking that little lip and then screwing it there where we got a dimple dyed outlet cover. But that's probably what's going to happen. Just probably. All right, I'm gonna clean up some of this mess real quick, guys. We're gonna have to do the car shuffle uh, so we can roll that thing forward, clean this side of the shop to that side of the shop, then move the yeehaw, shove that back in, and then we'll be able to figure out how to lift. But it's crazy that if we had a shop where we had a lift right now, and had we done this in between the lift, right now probably we'd just be whoop, straight picking up the body rolling the chassis out from underneath it but uh we don't have a lift yet yet yeah that'd be all right won't it <laughs> uh we might have to put that on the list of the dumbest thing i've ever possibly done in my life i may have just completely forgot to put the wheels and tires on the back of that and take it off the jack stands before i just decided to pull on it of course, the toe roll ain't no punk, so I couldn't even feel it. You know, it was just, it pulled it no problem. Y'all know that. Uh, yeah, that's uh, slightly embarrassing. <laughs> I cannot believe I just did that. Like, <laughs> totally forgot to put wheels and tires on. <laughs> that's a new one. Yeah, she landed on the trailing arm. Body did it, hit or nothing. She's fine. Handful of you got a laugh, handful of you got to call me an idiot, handful of you did both. You laughed and called me an idiot. So, you know what? Should be all right. We'll get her jacked back up here. 
That's actually a patented technique because if you're trying to pull the body and it's been sitting there for so long, you want to pull it off the jack stands. That way the impact shocks it and it actually loosens it up, kind of like an impact. It's so able to get that side also with it jacked from this side. Nine out of ten times, the vehicle's going to roll better with all the wheels on it. Well, at least I did that with a little grace and elegance. Uh, I only seen the tire even touch this once. Of course, it ain't going to bend none of that up. We're going to be good there. Now, I'm thinking, man, y'all seen me pick the back of stuff up before with the crane and then strap to the rafters. Got some of that red metal up there I just swing across too. She's going to be heavy. Uh, my thought process is to try to figure out how to pick up the back, possibly use the crane, and try to get it high enough where we can fabricate some kind of stand on the back side uh, that holds the body. And then we try to pick up the front. I ain't figured that out yet. Uh, you might use jacks, lifts, who knows. We may have to slap the crane on the back of the tow roller and try it that away. I'm curious if the back's loose though, if it'll start to pick up or not for us. We're gonna chalk the front tires. And I'd like to figure out how to pick up on this a little bit to see if it's uh, separated. Just unbox this old bad mamma jamma. And uh, I bought it the other day, not even for this purpose. But that one's already maxed out right there, so let's see if this one's any better. That wasn't much help. Whew. That was just the hood slamming. Scared me. Uh, this body mount just popped. That bolt had it held up a little bit, but you can see there's some gappage in there now. Now the challenge here is not to get this thing super sky high. Uh, we just got to get it high enough that if we pull our wheels and tires off and drop that chassis down where we can sit on some rollers or something and be able to drag that thing out from underneath there so the challenge is to get it up in a way where you can still get the chassis out from underneath it what would you do mr horsepower i need your guidance clay smith would put a hog ass cam in it and say send it so i'll put a hog ass jack stand underneath it and say send it same thing, I did not buy these for this intent, but if we start to lower that down and these catch our body, I got it right on a pinch weld there where hopefully there's some strength. You can see on this side a little bit, that pinch weld for strength, you know, right, right there where that rust hole is. There, just move it forward to here. And the body should stay in the air, but that should help the chassis want to drop some. Theoretically. Unless she's binding, and then it may not drop at all. Or, Unless that jack stand just goes through the floor, then it may not drop at all. Yeah, I don't think we were high enough for there to be enough, enough drop in play. Now one good thing is, this floor support, all that stuff on this car is solid. So I just jacked up on that and it did not mind at all. And uh, as you can see between our body and chassis, we're getting some separation. Now we're gonna take another jack and work the other side and get it picked up. Just buzz through our uh, fuel hose from the hard line to the tank. I ran out of, uh, I was one short on the pavers. Had enough for four on that side, but only three on this side. So yeah, some two by fours will work or four by fours, I mean. Now, as far as the back goes, we got some good separation going on here. Uh, yeah, if we could drop that wheel and tire off and that would probably drop good eight inches or so. 
and if that drops eight inches i think we're going to be pretty close to being able to slide this thing out of here we'll come out here with a fresh brain tomorrow hopefully not do anything stupid like hook a chain to it and pull it off the jack stands because that was smart and yeah we'll see what we can get done tomorrow well the good news is uh the next morning it's still on jack stands uh it did not fall overnight i still don't know how we're gonna get the front as we start to take it up we're gonna have to be careful because obviously we're just on some maxed out jack stands back here we do have some distance between our front mounts uh, I kind of want to jack on this right here and just see if it starts to pick up. She ain't the strongest cross member ever, but she is solid. I mean, she's got some strength to her. It's definitely starting to pick it up. It does make me nervous because those fenders are obviously bolted onto that. Of course, all of it's kind of locked together for strength, but still, we're putting a lot of pressure on our front clip if we pick it up right there the, the whole way. Here's one not so surprising fact about these cars. These cars have really solid rockers in them. The way these things are boxed for strength and everything. Uh, right now I just got the jack on our pinch wheel down there and it's picking it up no problem. An x frames designed to twist. Uh, they did that for comfort. And I wanna say I read that uh, because the frames twist so much, the rockers were, they're pretty girthy in there. I can't remember what size. Now, I read it on the internet 10 years ago, so that don't mean it's true. Uh, but, rockers are strong. See, looking like a damned old four-wheel drive. About to get some mud boggers up on this unit. I still don't know how the hell we're going to get this chassis out from under it. This is our highest point we're going to have to clear right here. No, oh, yeah. Uh, we got a parking brake cable that we did not disconnect. I completely forgot about. Drop that back down a little bit to take some of the tension off that. I don't know if we can take the parking brake off from the inside and get that cable off. Well, three bolts and that drops down easy enough. And yeah, it looks like we can pull that cable out right there. Just like all these years, I've always just cut them. Of course, that ball don't pull through our pulley down there. I think I just snapped our pulley. I pulled the pulley. Yeah, I chipped her. Our cable's free. You can see it's on the chassis side now. Dropping down, she's dropping down. Oh yeah, uh, pesky speedometer cable got us too. So let's take this back up and we will uh, put some of our wheel dollies underneath the A-arms. Kinda like that. And that. And we're gonna pull this off real quick. You don't wanna be underneath there too much. Try to just reach up in there. Lower that sucker back down. Where are we at at this point? <laughs> I shoved that forward some. We're gonna have to take it forward so we can drop it off the wheels back here, but we gotta clear our jack stands from the frame at the same time. I may try to just slide that whole thing out no, you can't because that jack's in the way, dummy. <laughs> well, we're kind of sort of getting there now, I guess. Set her down and got this in. That's exactly five inches of material. So now we got to find a five incher to put in the other side. The level of sketchiness just keeps going up here. That all equaled about five and a quarter. We'll take it. I recommend to nobody to do this, okay? It's just what I gotta do. We're gonna slowly take them up to see as high as we can get this thing now.
Just slow and steady a little that side a little this side. Old wagon's sitting pretty level now. I think our engine will clear that cross member. It's gonna be close. Oh baby, it's working guys. We got a good majority pulled out front. Now we're at the tricky part. Obviously this is holding our wagon up. That rear end's too wide to go between our jacks. Uh, I did have to drop that center chunk onto a single dolly to get this rear dropped enough for that chassis. I cleared that floor. It did clear. I know it looks like it would rub, uh, but it just slid right underneath that puppy. Now what I want to do is I want to get this side as close to the jack as we can uh because we're gonna go on the back side the rear end and try putting another jack there taking the weight off the front jack pull it forward jack 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 you know what i mean slow and steady bingo took the jack we took out of this side moved it to the back side of that side and then pulled this jack out at this point in my life, I'm extremely happy I bought so many jacks the last year because uh, right now they're totally saving my hind end. We got her going good i stopped because could you imagine if this one clamp caught that ac hose and after doing all that work we yanked that right off of the stands or whatever little sneaky crap like that that's how they get you boy if i still drink we'd be having a victory beer right now because that's a victory oh uh, yeah guys get you a lot of blocks and actually no don't do it this way find a buddy with the lift uh, we could easily put the lift on the front and back of the rocker Whoop, pick this thing straight up. But I told y'all overall it's easy. It ain't that much work. If I wasn't recording, uh, we probably would have done this same amount that we've done in probably five or six hours. Measured from hole to hole on our frame, about 36 and a half inches. So I drilled us some new holes in this. Now our legs are hitting our fender well some, uh, but I don't think it's gonna take much. And it'll kind of shove those forward. We can shove them back or tweak them if we need to. I don't think it's gonna tear up anything. Little by little, we lower it down. I had to bring old red in because that stuff was starting to get a little squirrely looking. <laughs> Let's uh, weld these stands on. This project right here is a good example of sometimes why you just gotta uh, go for it, guys. Because I tried to plan and plan and plan in my head how I could do this. And uh, I didn't even think about just using jacks and working it like we did. So I kind of had to get into it so we can figure out the solution. Boy, it's amazing the difference being able to see through your welding helmet will make. <laughs> we did it, there's the front. Now we gotta figure out the back. We get this ready, we're gonna go across the middle here. That was almost uh, dangerous. I got too confident there, went to lower it down. Uh, a little more than I probably should have and lost it off the other side. Luckily the rack was underneath there and caught it. So yeah, I don't think we tore up anything over here. Nope. There we go. We can get her started now. It's 
She sits a little higher in the front than the rear, but pff, that's fine. Man, Detective Bill went and had us some taco, boy. Let me show you why he's Detective Bill. You already know he's outside investigating the case. Where'd you go, Detective Bill? Hey, back there. Killing weeds. Yeah. Now we know why she died. Little kablooey hole right inside the oil pan. It's, it's, it's above the deck. Spun the rod bearing. Looks like a boat anchor to me, Bill. You're a detective, not a damn locksmith. <laughs> I had the van keys on me. Let's look underneath this thing now that we kind of can. And driver one, I think we're good. We're just gonna have to go on the driver uh, passenger floor pan and then passenger floor pan on that side and over here. All in all, none of it looks too bad. Of course, I think we need to get this open where we can flip that tailgate down or whatever. And then we can look at maybe cutting into our back brace to get to them rear mounts. So all in all, we got some work ahead of us. Don't get me wrong, but I'm glad we did it this, uh, this way. And I think it still keeps it budget friendly. Uh, we're not adding a whole lot, but I think it's gonna overall improve the quality uh, a good portion. So I reckon that's it. Y'all Y'all wanna know why I don't ever have nothing besides black shirts? That's cause I work in my shirts. And uh, yeah, I've got this light blue shirt right here and I'm scared to touch it to anything. <laughs> what shirt is that you ask? What's the old love tap baby? That shirt turned out really cool. We got the black and white logo on the front. Uh, it's not a black t-shirt, which is always a demand. So like I said, I think there's less than 500 of these and uh, once they're gone, they're gone. I do not, we're, we're not gonna print more of these exactly. Besides that, also available right now on the website, besides my little belly hanging out, uh, we got the Datsun t-shirt. That's the Datsun King delivery rig right there. And usually our vehicle shirts, we don't do a limited run of. Uh, so there still ain't a whole lot of these. Uh, they'll probably sell fairly quick. And we're definitely not projected to restock them anytime soon. So if you want one, I'd go ahead and get you one. Put my hat back on. Speaking of hats, uh, I don't know what colors yet, but Richardson 112 hats, we're going to release some of them. I appreciate y'all watching. I hope y'all's excited about this thing. I don't think it's going to take us terribly long. We're not doing a lot of fabricating engineering. Uh, we're just doing a lot of making this thing badass. That's what we're doing, by golly. Uh, now, I know some of y'all are ready to see the Model A or the International I kind of tease y'all with. I'm telling you now, my goal is to build all three of them before we move out to the new place. If that lets you know anything. I'll let you know one thing. To let you know mama didn't raise no punk right here baby i'm on the instagrammer on the patreon and i will see you guys next time but do not forget sitting on your hind end will not finish your project i'll see you guys next time